Hey, what's going on y'all? It's your man Pristine. Welcome to the unboxing video for the Redmi Note 7. Now, the Redmi Note 7, to me, in my personal opinion, is the official Moto G7 killer. I know that the Moto G7 has, you know, the, the has been the reigning champion, you know, for, 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 you know, it, it, it's price range and, and, and performance and specs in the budget and mid-range categories. You know what I mean? But the Redmi Note 7 here is going to be hard to top. All right. So follow me and let's get into this unboxing. Now, first off, I like to start off with the specs. One of the most important specs being the price. Now, you can get this phone right now from Amazon for 230 bucks. All right. Link is down below in the description. Okay, this phone was announced in January 2019 and was released on February 28th of 2019. This is the global variant. Okay, so it should work. Well, it's going to work with all GSM carriers. This phone is GSM unlocked. It's not going to work with CDMA networks. Okay, so that's something that you need to be mindful of. All right, now on to the specs. We got a 6.3 inch. 1080 by 2340 pixel IPS LCD HD plus panel. We've got a 19 by 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio, 409 for the PPI pixel density, Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back, and we've got a screen to body ratio of 81.4%. Now under the hood, We've got a Snapdragon 660 processor with an octa-core CPU and Adreno 512 GPU. 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage that can be expanded up to 256 gigs. We do have dual hybrid SIM slots. So you can have dual nano SIMs or you can have a nano SIM and an SD card to expand your memory. We are running Android 9 Pi, fresh out the box, and that's running on top of MIUI 10. All right, now the cameras. We've got a dual camera system on the rear, single camera on the front. Now on the rear, we've got a 48 megapixel primary sensor and a five megapixel depth sensor. On the front, we've got a 13 megapixel shooter. All right, some of the camera features that we got, we've got HDR, electronic image stabilization, dual tone LED flash, panorama, all right? There is no 4K recording, okay? So that's, you know, some of you guys may be upset about that. Me, that's not a big deal to me because I rarely ever record in 4K. 1080p is fine with me. So we've got 1080p at either 30 or 60 frames per second, and then you can scale it down to 720 if that's something that you want to do. All right, now, battery. We've got a 4,000 milliamp hour non-removable battery, USB 2.0 Type-C reversible connector, we do have an 18 watt fast charging brick in the box. And this phone also supports Quick Charge 4. Now, strangely, uh, 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 the plug that you would need to take advantage of Quick Charge 4 isn't the plug that comes included within the package here. So that is a separate accessory that you would need to buy. But if you are to get your hands on that, then you're gonna be able to charge this phone at ridiculous speeds, more so than the fast charging brick that comes in the box, all right? Now, additional features. We've got Bluetooth 5.0, FM radio. We have an IR blaster. We've got fingerprint sensor, face ID, and we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. All right, now the colors that you can get this phone in, you can get it in nebula red, twilight gold, Neptune blue, and space black. All right, so that's all we got for the specs here. Now let's take a look at the presentation. I actually like this. You know, nice clean box with the orange trim. Redmi Note 7. It's got the little me sign up there. Okay, to the right, Redmi Note 7. You can see right there, global version. Top, it's clean. Redmi Note 7, global version also on the left. And then to the back, then this is where you're gonna get a lot. It's gonna talk a lot about, you know, the specifications and features for the device. It is, I like the fact that it is covered in plastic. So, got the little unboxing knife right here. Let's go ahead and Michael Myers is joining. Ah. Mm. 
right. Let's get that plastic to the side. And here we go. Oh, come on now. Oh. Okay, here we go. All right, get the top off. Take the top off this joint. All right, let's see here. I'm pretty sure this is a lot of our information. Okay, there's our SIM key right there. Nice. Okay, got a case for the phone right there. A little soft shell rubber TPU. Always welcomed. And here is our typical books and literature. Okay, we'll go ahead and toss that aside. Boom. There's our device right there, Redmi Note 7. Ah, and this is that Nebula Blue. Beautiful. Look at that. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Let's go ahead and peel off this plastic. If I can get my nail under that. There we go. Boom. Okay. And let's get it off the back. Oh, come on. I always feel like I'm going to like scratch the phone. I'm going to peel that stuff off. And then let's see. There's another little piece of plastic right there. Boom. Beautiful. And then you can see Redmi. Little branding right there in the bottom. Goodness. All right, so let's go ahead and power this bad boy on and we'll set it aside and go through the rest of the contents in the box while it's booting up. Okay. Okay, so here is our 18 watt adapter right there. And here is our type C, a USB to type C. charge cable and ladies and gentlemen that is everything that comes in the box and so again I will file all that stuff to the side and here is the device 6.3 inches you can see we've got the little teardrop notch at the top 6.3 inches corner to corner okay we do have a little bit of a chin down here on the bottom um, that's not really a big deal to me, but I know that, you know, we live in a time now where, you know, phones are really making these these devices with as slim, the, the slimmest bezels possible. And so this kind of like reminds me of like the, the Galaxy S10e or like the um, the iPhone XR, you know what I mean? That's, that's what this reminds me of, but it feels really, really good in my hand. And although it's, it's Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back, but it doesn't feel really slippery at all. Right? It feels really good and comfortable in my hand. Definitely you want to protect that investment though and slap that case on here though. But God, look at that. What a thing of beauty. All right, so to the right of the device, we've got the power button along with the volume rocker there. Okay, top of the device, here is our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There is a little noise canceling microphone right there. And then here is our IR blaster. Okay, to the left of the device, we've got our SIM tray right there and let me just go ahead and pop that out because I know a lot of you guys want confirmation that it is a dual SIM and so here we are I'm gonna go ahead and get my nail under that and pull that bad boy out boom there we are okay so as you can see right there dual nano SIM Okay. So to the left of the device again, we've got the SIM tray and nothing else. The rest of the device on the left side is clean. On the bottom, we've got a bottom firing speaker and another noise canceling microphone. Here's our type C port for charging. And then on the rear, God, this is so beautiful. Rear mounted fingerprint sensor right there. Little red me branding right there on the bottom and then here is our dual camera system 48 megapixel sensor 5 megapixel sensor and there's our dual tone led flash right there 
All right, so you can see right there, MIUI 10. Gonna go ahead and get my information put in the device and I'll be right, be right back at the desktop and we'll browse around the operating system a bit. All right, hang tight. All right, y'all, so we back in. So here we are at the desktop for the Redmi Note 7. Uh, been playing with the phone for a bit and I gotta say, man, this phone is absolutely amazing. You are getting a remarkable value for the amount of money that you're spending for this device. I mean, 230 bucks plus tax. I mean, you're still paying under 250. And I mean, you're getting, you know, the build quality, Corning Gorilla Glass 5, Snapdragon 660 processor, excellent cameras, performance, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage that can be expanded up to 256 gigs. Either that or either 256 or 512. Um, let me see my little cheat sheet here. Yeah, expandable to 256. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Type-C fast charging capabilities. It does support uh, Bluetooth Quick Charge 4, which again, I mentioned that's a separate accessory that you would have to buy. But nonetheless, I mean, the 18-watt charger that comes in the box is going to charge this thing fast enough. You know what I mean? Now, you've got a big 4,000 milliamp hour battery in this bad boy, so it may take a little bit longer, you know, th to charge than some of the phones that have smaller batteries that also have quick charge. But it's still going to give you a pretty fast charge from 0 to 100, even charging a big battery like 4,000 milliamps. All right, so... Um, you're getting a lot here. I mean, beautiful package here. Now, I did put the little case on the phone just to kind of give it some grip. Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back. The phone, it, it it doesn't feel, it's not that, it doesn't have a slippery feel. Like, I really feel like it's got some oleophobic coating that kind of helps with uh, light reflectiveness and also kind of gives it a little bit of grip so that it's not really, you know, your skin isn't slippery on the glass. But I've just gotten so accustomed to putting these rubber TPU cases on all of my phones, which really provides a sense of grip. So, yeah, I've got that. I've got that on the phone. But you can see the beautiful uh, Neptune blue color just kind of, you know, it's like purple at the top and then it fades down into the blue. And then it just kind of changes colors just, you know, when it's when light or sunlight is reflecting off of it. I mean, so it, it, it's I mean, it's a really good looking phone. It's definitely going to turn heads. It's rounded around the corners. The edges from back to front. I mean, so it's a comfortable hold in the hand. Um, now the phone is a, it's a little wide. I mean, you know, after using devices like the uh, 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 the Sony Xperia 10 and the 10 Plus, I mean, those are really really thin devices. I mean, so this is a little bit on the thicker side, but again, it's pretty standard. You know, 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio, uh, teardrop notch right there at the top, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you know, Android 9 Pie. Fresh out of the box, running on Mi UI 10. And I'm a big fan of Mi UI. I love the fact that it just gives you a lot of different things to customize um, from scrolling apps. You can change the transition effects. And basically, how you do that is you just pinch the screen, either that or you can long press on the display. Well, is it? Oh, well, that ended up moving my clock and that's not what i wanted to do okay so i'll put that back where it was okay so yeah just pinch the screen and then you're going to see wallpaper widgets and settings and then when you go to settings you're going to see transition effect set default screen fill empty cells lock home screen layout and more and so to change the transition effects you just tap on that and it's going to give you like three different pages of transition effects that you can choose from OK, so just, you know, just give you the ability to personalize your device a little bit more. I mean, I know a lot of people have a lot of people know about this phone. I'm not sure about, you know, the fact that a lot of people may know about it or even have it in the States. Um, so, you know, the chances of you running into people that may have the same device are pretty slim. If so, it's not going to be very many. Um, and I'm a big fan of just having something different. You know, I don't want to have the same devices that everybody else has. I want the phone to catch somebody's eye and be like, damn, what is that? And then that gives me the ability to tell them all about it. You know what I'm saying? And tell them, you know, how good it is and how it may be just as good of, if, if not better than whatever they're rocking. And they need to expand their horizons because there's a bunch of stuff out here. You know what I'm saying? Beyond Samsung and Apple, you know what I'm saying? That are really good. That ain't going to break the bank and charge what Samsung and Apple are charging. If you catch my drift, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um. Yeah, so 
Again, you swipe down from the top, that's gonna get you to your notifications and part of your quick toggles. And then if you swipe down again, that's gonna bring you to your whole quick toggle shade. Okay, and you got a bunch of quick toggles there. You do have the ability to customize those if you like. Um, or you can just rock with the default orientation as it is when it's out of the box. All right. Now, in order to um, to customize the defaults on the second page, you just hit edit. And this is the screen where you can go to just to kind of take your finger along, press and drag the toggles around where you want them. I mean, so typically my order, I always like to have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, mobile data, vibrate, screenshot and stuff on like the first the first row or two. You know what I mean? So you just kind of move the stuff around, you know, where you want it. And then when you're done, you just simply hit done and it saves it in the orientation in which you just set it. All right. Now, if we go to the settings, as you can see, we've got, uh, uh, I don't want to say it's a consolidated uh, a settings list, uh, kind of like what you find on like, like Android one or like pure stock Android devices. Again, this is Android 9 Pi over MIUI 10. So um, MIUI 10, it looks a little bit different, but just like Android 9 Pi, this phone has a lot of features and functions, but they're buried deep within the bowels of the device. And so in order to find certain things, you're really going to have to scrutinize this settings menu. OK, you're going to have to scrutinize it a lot. And there's been some phones that I've had after the Pi, even when Oreo, when Oreo dropped, you know, the list, the, the settings list was a little bit more consolidated and um, you kind of had to dig around for stuff. You know, stuff wasn't as obvious. And I find that to be the case on the Redmi Note 7 as well. Not to say that that's a bad thing, you know, and, you know, I don't think it's it's, it's not a bad thing that any and everybody who gets these phones completely go through all the settings menu so that you learn your device and that you know exactly what its capabilities are. You know what I mean? But some people are just very basic, you know what I mean? And they just want everything to be right in front of their faces. And if they don't see it, then they just automatically come to the conclusion, oh, well, the phone must not do this or that or must not have this feature or that feature or function because I don't see it. You know what I mean? It's like you got to dig around a little bit. All right. So um, now fresh out of the box, I, I like the fact that about phone is at the top on like a, a stock Android or like a near stock Android device, about phone is typically at the bottom of the device. But on the me, on, on the Xiaomi phones, it's at the top. And at the, you know, you got system update, device name, model number, as you can see there, Redmi Note 7, Android version, Android 9. As uh, soon as I took the phone out of the box and turned it on, there was a security update, you know, so we have the latest security patch, MIUI version, you can see MIUI Global 10.2, stable 10.2.8, uh, CPU, octa-core, max 2.2 gigahertz, RAM, 4 gigs, internal storage, 64 gigs. Now, I, I did take the time to, to download all of my applications on the device, and so I've got 47.35 gigabytes left over as far as my storage. Before I downloaded any of my applications, as far as the pre-installed apps that came on this device, it was 51.60 gigabytes. So, you know, they say that, you know, the phone has 64 gigs of storage, but when you take it out of the box, the pre-installed applications is going to take up a significant amount. And so, like I said, out of the box, it was 51.60. Okay, so just be mindful of that. You do not really have 64 gigs um, off the top. Okay, but RAM, as you can see. Um, and then the rest of me, you can go down to status and, you know, you can check your SIM card information and all that kind of thing. All right. So go back to the settings, system apps, updater, security status, wireless and networks. This is where you've got your SIM cards and mobile networks. Again, this phone is GSM unlocked. And so any GSM carrier will work with this phone. It is the global variant. And so you're not going to have to worry at all. But if it is CDMA, Sprint, Verizon, and even, though, you know, I'm going to pop my Verizon SIM card in this phone because it may work because Verizon is now a hybrid network. You know what I mean? They're slowly transitioning away from CDMA. And my understanding is that as of the end of 2019, they're going to completely do away with CDMA and they're going to be completely a GSM carrier. But right now, because of the fact that, you know, they are in this transition and most people who travel around the world are normally rocking phones that have CDMA or they have CDMA networks in those areas. Uh, Verizon has set their network up to where it is. It can it can function under both. GSM and CDMA, which is why all their phones are unlocked. And that's a beautiful thing about buying phones from Verizon. They don't advertise that. But if you buy a phone at Verizon Wireless, no matter what phone it is, it is completely unlocked. Because at this point here today, 
Uh, what is this? April 19th, 2019, Verizon is a hybrid company. It is GSM and CDMA compatible. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm going to pop my, my, my Verizon SIM card in here and see what pops off. Um, but it should work considering the fact that now Verizon is a hybrid uh, a hybrid network. Okay, but we got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, portable hotspot, data usage, more. When you click on more, you've got airplane mode, VPN, Bluetooth, tethering, wireless display, reset Wi-Fi, mobile Bluetooth, emergency alerts. This is the area where it would show whether or not the phone has NFC. We do not have NFC on this device. And so if you're the type to do mobile payments or transfer information wirelessly through UFC or NFC, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that. Now, me, is that a big deal? No, because I never use these things. On my iPhones, I never use Apple Pay. On my Samsungs, I never use Samsung Pay. Even on just Android phones that have NFC, I never use Google Pay or I never transfer information through Bluetooth or wirelessly using, using NFC or whatever. So that's not really a big deal to me. But to you, that may be a problem. Okay, so if you're looking for a phone that has NFC, uh, NFC you're not going to find it here on the Redmi Note 7. Now, it may be on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, but it's not here on the Redmi Note 7. Okay, now under personal, we've got display. Okay, if you click on display, we've got brightness level, reading mode, contrast, and colors. So if you click on contrast and colors, this is going to take you to the screen where you can adjust the contrast and colors. And so by default, it's on default. You can either go warm, which kind of gives the screen more of a yellowish tint to it, or you can go cool, which kind of gives the screen a more of a bluish tint. And you can see the little dot right there, and you can move that dot around to get the color, you know, uh, 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 saturation to where you want it. I mean, if you want it more orange, yellowish, greenish, bluish, pinkish, or more white, you can change that around with your finger and just have it customized to your liking. Me. I'm going to just rock it on default, and that's what it is. And so under the contrast settings, you've got automatic contrast, increased contrast, and standard. And so automatic is optimized contrast for available light, increased contrast, increased displays contrast, and then under standard contrast will remain constant. Okay, so you have the ability to change that up, the contrast and the colors. You change your text size, double tap on screen to wake auto rotate the screen raise to wake those are all wonderful uh, options which i've got those turned on okay then wallpaper themes bunch of themes and things that you can choose from sound and vibration this is where you customize your ringtone volumes alarm media volumes phone ringtone message received a, a notification sound calendar sound default notification sound and then you've got some other options as well here um, you can also vibrate for calls vibrate in silent mode vibrate on tap uh, dial, dial pad tones, tap, um, tap sound, screen locking sound, screenshot sound, and delete sound. And so a lot of stuff in here to play with. Now we'll go back to the settings. And then under system and device, we've got lock screen and password. So if you click on that, this is where you're going to be able to add more fingerprints beyond the startup. Okay, so you can manage fingerprints, set up a screen lock, privacy protection, password, sleep. And so this is where you're going to control how long it takes for your phone to go to sleep. Normally I rock with it on 30 seconds, but I just put it on never just for the sake of the video so that the phone is not constantly, you know, screen turning off and on and I'm constantly having to turn the screen back on. Um, wake screen for notifications, wake with volume buttons, launch camera. And so you can choose to press the volume button twice to unlock the camera if that's something you want to do. But there's other ways to do that as well. And I'll show you that a little later in a second. Then when you go to advanced settings, this is where on the lock screen, how you want your notifications to appear. You know, do you want your phone to notify you of a notification? And if so, do you want the information of the notification to be displayed on the screen? Or do you want it just to notify you, hey, you got a notification, but the, but the information be private? That's how I set it up. You know what I mean? So, you know, you never know who's looking over your shoulder, you know, trying to see what's on your phone and a notification pop up and, you know, the information pops up. Then your, your, your personal information is visible to people. You know what I mean? So I just, you know, choose show all notifications, but hide contents. But then you've got show, don't show notifications at all or show notifications and their content. OK, so again, some more security options right there. And then you got uh, pocket mode. And so I got that turned on so that when the phone is in your pocket, it knows that it's in a pocket. So there won't be any accidental presses if the screen is unlocked in your pocket. You know, you won't be butt dialing or, you know, uh, 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 turning on applications and then your phone is running in your pocket and you have no idea what's going on. You know, battery draining and all that kind of thing just because you got your phone open and opening up apps every step you take. You don't want that. So you want to turn on pocket mode. All right. Now. Let's see. And then we got privacy policy. So then we'll go back to the settings. 
And then we've got notifications and status bar. Okay, so this is what this is how you control your notifications some more. Show icons for incoming notifications, show connection speed, show carrier when device is locked, edit carrier name, battery indicator. I've got it on percentage. You can have percentage or graphical. And what that means is like percentage, right? I don't know if you guys can see, but it's very tiny. But the battery percentage is inside the little box right there. So the actual number of the battery life. If you hit graphical, then it just turns into the little graphic right there. Okay. But me, I like to see the number. I like to look at the phone and be like, oh, okay, I've got 80% left or I've got 64%. And so right now it says 96. Okay. So, you know, but you do have the ability to change that. And I'm a fan of that. All right. Now, notification shade, collapse after touch, show on lock screen or notification shade shortcut. You can tweak that as well. Like I said, a lot of stuff that you can go and customize here. All right, now home screen and recents. Okay, now this is where you can change your launcher. Default launcher, okay, system launcher is what it is. Any other launchers that you download, this is where they're gonna live and this is where you'll be able to choose them. Okay, app vault, home screen settings, fill empty cells, lock home screen layout, show memory status, show suggestions. All right, we'll get out of that. Now, full screen display. This is where you are able to either have the uh, navigation keys down here at the bottom and I just turned those on for the sake of the video me I like to rock without them just to be able to take full advantage of that 18 or that 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio okay so you you just click full screen gestures and you scroll down and here are all the notification jet or the uh, the navigation gestures and it's a tutorial and so it will give you a tutorial on how to show you you know how to how to how to navigate your phone by gestures okay that's where you go to do that now just for the sake of the video i'm just going to bring the buttons back up because it's a little bit easier you know to navigate the device um on camera but for me it's a little bit easier to do it the other way just because that's what i've gotten used to all right now that's where you do that now Second space, second space for all of you people out there that are huge on privacy, for all of you people out there that are living that creep life, as my man Flossie Carter would say, you know what I'm saying? Living that creep life, you know, creeping on a come up, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you slick talking ladies, slithering through the glass or through the grass, behind your man's back, grimy with it, slimy with it. Are you brothers out there trying to be a player? You know what I'm saying? Got your main thing back at the crib. Good girl. But you want your cake and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? Got you a few bad little ones on the side. You know what I'm saying? And you want to keep that protected. You don't want the main thing to find out because you know you got something to lose. Well, what Second Space does is say you're chilling with your lady, right? And a lot of times, you know, you be up late, notifications, you know what I'm saying? You be, she see you texting, but don't know who you texting, never really bothered to ask. You know what I'm saying? Because she trusts you, all right? At this point, you ain't really giving her too many reasons or any reasons at all to think anything otherwise. But then just say something, she, she sees a little, see something's a little suspicious, and then she asks you one day, babe, you know, who you, who you be texting late, on, on a late night like that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'll be over here reading my book or watching my TV shows, but you know, you be getting a lot of notifications after hours. And I'm starting to get a little concerned about that, or at least just growing a little bit of curiosity. You know what I'm saying? I know you ain't talking to your boys that late where you could be, but you know, I'm your gal, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just asking, what's up? Who that is? And you can just be like, oh, babe, you know what I mean? I'm just talking to the fellas, babe. You know what I'm saying? You know, man, come on, babe. It's just me and you, baby. You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about nothing else. You know what I'm saying? It's me and you, baby girl. Come on now. And then she'd be like, well, man, let me see your phone. No reason to start sweating. Why? Because you got second space. Now, let me show you what second space is. All right. So let's see. Go to second space. Boom. All right. Now. This is second space. So check this out, y'all. When I lock the device with my right index finger, if I unlock my phone, it's gonna take me right back to where we were just at in the settings. This is my setup, all right, my setup. This is, you know, my phone, all my applications, what I normally do, right? 
And if I was out there living that creep life, this is, you know, under this, under all my, under my stuff, this is where the dirt would be. Pictures, text messages that I don't want her to see, all that, right? Now, she ain't knowing about the fact that this phone has an option called second space. So what you do is when your lady asks to see your phone because she feel you suspicious, then you just be like, oh, yeah, babe, hold up. You know what I'm saying? Now, with my left index finger, hit the fingerprint sensor, and it's second space. What this does is it takes you to the phone as it was when it's fresh out the box. So it doesn't appear as though any of my applications have been you know, uploaded on the phone. And you know what I mean? And so it's just like, man, you hit second space and hand her the phone. And she's going to see there ain't nothing, nothing that she'll be able to go through that's going to incriminate you. <laughs> nothing that she's going to be able to go through that's going to prove your guiltiness. You know what I mean? She'll go through it and be like, oh, okay, babe, I love you. You my boo. I don't even know. I was just tripping. You know what I'm saying? I was creating false realities because I was thinking all this. And then, you know, I've been talking to my girls, you know what I'm saying? And they've been putting all this BS off in my head. You know, but I, I love you, baby. I'm, I'm sorry, baby. I, I was just tripping. Please forgive me. Oh, baby, it's all good, baby. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't worry about it, baby. You know, sense of security. You know what I'm saying? It's my, it's my job to provide you with that, you know what I'm saying? And to make sure that, you know, you trust me and I ain't doing nothing to give you, you know, uh, them kind of thoughts and things yeah it's all good baby it's me and you but then as soon as she hand you your phone back you just lock your phone and then unlock it with your right index and then it's right back to the griminess you know what i mean now that's pretty dope now that's just one scenario man that's just a scenario where a second space could be used i mean you know there's people out there i'm sure that just really want privacy and just really want to protect you know their information or whatever it is that they've got on their device but that is that's that's <laughs> that's pretty crazy right there, man. You know what I'm saying? I know my man Flossie, he'd like that. He'd appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? He's always talking about that creep life. Now, that don't mean he's doing it, but I, he be talking about it a lot in his videos, and I think it's pretty hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to my man Flossie, man. But uh, yeah, so second space. Now, moving on down the line, we got battery and performance. And so battery and performance, you got power, power usage, use adaptive battery, and choose apps. Okay, so this is where you can go in and optimize your battery. Okay, and so under battery usage, it's gonna scan the device for any applications that may be running in the background or utilizing more battery than what it should. And if it does, it's gonna pop up right here and it's gonna tell you, you may wanna optimize this. Or you may wanna shut this, this app down or that app down. And it's gonna tell you when you close whatever those apps out, how much more battery you just gained by shutting down those apps. Like yesterday, there were like three apps running in the background. I chose to close them out and it was like, okay, man, those apps have been, been, been shut down and optimized. Now your battery has three more minutes of performance. And I mean, wasn't really a big deal at that point because my battery was still up in the nineties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, still, you know, um, battery sustainability is battery sustainability. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be a minute of extra battery time or three minutes. I mean, them, them can be some crucial minutes in a time when you need them. You know what I mean? So this is where you go to um, optimize your battery. And, you know, there's a graph here that will tell you which applications are using what. It gets very detailed. You know what I mean? And it gives you a complete breakdown on what's draining your battery the most and how you want to optimize your battery. Now, just remember, whenever you optimize your battery, there's always going to be some features or functions that you're going to have to do without. The phone has to shut down certain things in order to give you that additional battery life. OK, so be mindful of that. All right. Now, moving on down the list, we've got storage, Google, additional settings, me account, sync, system apps, installed apps, dual apps, permissions, app lock, and feedback. Now, if we go to additional settings, this is going to bring us to date and time, languages and input, region, privacy, enterprise mode, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, but it tells you if you click on it, authorization and revocation, quick ball, and I'll show you quick ball in a second. Button and gesture shortcuts, notification light, which there is a teeny tiny LED light here at the bottom. So for those of you that that's important to, rest assured there is a notification light on this phone. There is a notification light on this part of my kids are in the living room while and out y'all, pardon the noise. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little LED, LED, uh, LED light there. And if you click on that, 
then you can see it says light up when charging and then blink light for notifications. So post notification light when new notification is received, you can turn those things on or off. I opt to have those things on. Why? Because if the screen is off and you see the LED blinking, then that's your indication that you've got a notification. All right. So we'll go back out of that. Headphones and audio effects, I'll talk about that in a second. One-handed mode, we do have one-handed mode here, present, and all you do is just simply swipe across, well, didn't mean to do that, okay? Wait, how do you do this? There you go, okay, so you swipe across the bottom of the phone, and this is gonna bring you to your one-handed mode, okay? And then to get back, you just swipe, to the, or you just touch the empty part where the screen isn't, and then to have it go to the left, you just swipe to the left. Okay, so it's like the bottom of the display, even though there's not really anything there, it's just, I don't know if there's like a sensor there or something that can kind of tell when your finger swipes against it, and that's what's gonna bring you to your one-handed mode. And then you do have the ability to change how tall you want the uh, one-handed mode, up. either 4.5 inches, four inches, it's on four inches by default, or 3.5 inches, okay? So I like the fact that you do have the ability to change that. Okay, now we've got accessibility, printing, backup and reset, and me mover. Now button and gestures now this is dope this is where things get real dope all right now functional shortcuts as you can see ladies and gents we've got launch the camera take a screenshot launch google assistant turn off the screen turn on torch which torches the flashlight close current app open split screen show menu and then we've got press navigation buttons we've got menu there show recent apps tray system control automatically disable navigation buttons and this is just for like say if you want to have the navigation buttons on but then if there's certain apps where you just want to take uh, advantage of gestures in the full screen you can go in here and you can set this you can program these applications for whenever you open them then it's going to get rid of the navigation keys and it's going to be full screen that's what that is or you can go to press and hold the power button for 0.5 seconds to turn on let me see wake up voice assistant in full screen mode no virtual buttons oh okay so that's what that does and i'll leave that off but what this does is it basically gives us the ability to program what buttons we want to do what so like say for launch camera instance if i you know for instance if i don't want to just hit the camera app right well i can tap on launch camera and these are my options double press the power button long press the home button long press the menu button long press the back button press the power and the home button press the power in the menu button or press the power and the back button if i want to choose one of those to launch the camera now or if you don't want to do it then just hit none okay now to take a screenshot three fingers sliding down this is what we do to take a screenshot example boom screenshot taken all right now say if i want to change that i can just tap on that and again, I've got those options. Long press the home button, long press the menu button, long press the back button, or press the power of the home button, press the power of the menu button, or press the power of the back button to take a screenshot if that's what I want to do. And you can also swipe down to the quick toggles. And as you can see, screenshot is right there. So if you just want to take a screenshot that way, you can just hit that and it's going to take the screenshot. All right. So there's a few different ways in which you can take a screenshot on this phone. All right. Now. If I want to launch the Google Assistant, now we've got long press on the home button. That's pretty standard for all Android devices, unless you've got a dedicated Google Assistant button like you're going to find on the LG G8, for instance, and some other Android devices. Um, but say if I don't want to do that, all right, again, I can program it. Long press the home button or long press the menu button, long press the back button, power plus the home button, power plus the menu button, or power plus the back button. Catch my drift? That's pretty dope how it gives you the option to do that. Now, turn off the screen. Now there is a feature to double tap to wake the screen when the screen is asleep, but you can't double tap to turn off the device. So to turn off the screen, I've opted to just long press on the back button, like so, and boom, turns off the screen. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. You know what I mean? I'm a huge fan of that. Now the phone also has features that I've had turned on where if you raise the phone up, it's gonna open up the screen. The fingerprint sensor is lightning quick. And I mean lightning quick, all right? You barely tap it, 
boom, it's open. And it works 100% of the time. No whammies. Okay, 100% of the time. Look. Just like that. Lightning fast fingerprint sensor. Huge fan of that. Okay, so the ability that the phone gives you to program buttons, you know what I mean, that you want to perform certain actions is really, really, really dope. All right, now, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right here at the top, and there is an IR blaster. Dang it, man, I, I, you know, I was messing with the phone yesterday. I was watching a game, and I was sitting on my couch, and I forgot to get the TV remote, the stereo remote, and the cable remote. Now, when I'm rocking out, watching TV, watching games, or whatever I'm watching, I have to have those three remotes near me because when I'm done, I got to turn off the cable box. I got to turn off the stereo because we got a big Sony house stereo and everything is connected to the stereo so that we've really got that real deal theater type surround sound. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're in, it's like you're in the atmosphere, right? So I have to have the, the, the remote for that to turn it off. And then I need the, the TV remote. And I'm sitting there with my feet kicked up. And the speakers is on the whole other side of the room. Because, you know, we got the TV on the wall. And I was like, damn it. I'm chilling, man. I got my robe on. I'm full. I just got done eating. I don't want to move. I was watching Golden State beating up on the Clippers. And, man, I was like, man, I really don't feel like getting up, man. But my phone was right next to me. And I was like, man, damn, I forgot, man. I got the IR blaster. You know what I'm saying? So, man, two, three minutes of just programming my phone to each one of those devices, I didn't even have to move to get up and get them remotes. It was just a simple act of pointing the phone at the, t at, at the TV, turns off the TV. Point the phone at the stereo, turns off the stereo. Point the phone at the cable box, turns off the cable box. People, that is the power of an IR blaster. I don't understand whose idea it was to take that away from phones. That is huge. And the fact that you get that ability here on the Redmi Note 7 speaks volumes. I don't give a damn about the fact that the phone doesn't have an IP rating. People may be like, oh, well, the phone is Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back. How come it's not wireless charge compatible? I don't give a damn because I got an IR blaster. That makes up for the, for the, for the lack of an IP rating and, 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 and wireless charging. You know what I'm saying? And that's not even that's not even something that I'm expecting on a phone that costs 230 bucks. And not even saying that that's a bad thing because it's a damn good phone for the price. Like I said, you're getting way more. I mean, they can, the Xiaomi could charge way more for this phone. But the fact that they're only hitting you for 230 plus a little taxes depending on where you are. Oh man, excellent value. Now, headphones. I was in my Infinity. My Infinity, you know, it's an 08. Old school, but clean. You know what I'm saying? Bose sound system. Everything premium. You know, I got the aux cord set up in there. The, 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 the car has Bluetooth, but when you set up Bluetooth, it'll only allow you to talk on the phone. It won't stream music. Like in my CC. You know what I'm saying? My CC is a 2013. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so it's, you know, it's a little more advanced in that particular aspect. But when I plugged in that 3.5 millimeter jack in my Infinity with that Bose system, right? And I went under these headphone uh, 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 audio effects options and it, 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 like, it brings it to life, okay? And then you've got control volume level, control music playback, and it was reading it as though I had headphones plugged into it. So what it does is it gives you a list of all the headphones that Xiaomi sells and you choose one of those and it's going to optimize the sound based on the capabilities of that particular set of headphones. And then it still gives you the ability to tweak the sound. You know, there's a bunch of presets, there's an equalizer, you know what I'm saying? You could assign the buttons. Now see, when I hit assign buttons, it, won't, it, it, it senses that there's no headphone uh, uh, plugged into it. But once there's a headphone plugged into it and you hit assign buttons, if you have on like some headphones that has like controllers on them that has like a volume up and down or you have the ability to change the, tra the, the track backward or forward then you'll be able to program those buttons under assign buttons to what you want it to be as opposed to just you know what it is by default that's pretty dope but i was able ladies and gentlemen to customize the sound to the exact way that i like to listen to music which is 
low, low, low lower on the bass, high treble because I'm, I'm I'm huge on the clarity. You know, I like to hear the t -t 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 -t, you know the hi hats and all that. I like to hear clear voices. I don't want the bass just boom, 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 you know what I'm saying, just drowning out the sounds of everything else. Man, I'm a music freak. Collecting music is one of my hobbies. And I have an ear for it. And I like to hear everything in a song, every track. You know what I'm saying? Every sound, the hi-hats, the bass drum, the snare, the cymbals, the, 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 the pianos, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, the harmonicas, the guitars, the, the, the you know, playing the bass. Uh, 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 man, uh, uh, the xylophones, all that, the trumpets, all that. I want to hear all that in great clarity. So having something like this gives me the ability to change and tweak things because by default the sound is okay it sounds good you know what i'm saying now for some people you know just the default sound is going to be like oh man this thing is rocking and they won't have to change a thing but the way that i like to listen to music and the fact that this thing gives you so many things to tweak man i don't see why anybody wouldn't be able to adjust the sound the way that they like to listen to music with the options that this phone gives it is it is amazing you know what i mean and I was just, me and the, me and my babies, man, they was in the back seat, you know what I'm saying, rocking out, kicking their feet, bop, bopping their head, you know what I'm saying, we was listening to some jazz, all, you know, when I'm riding with the kids, I don't listen to anything secular, you know what I'm saying, I'm a man of God, and I'm not perfect, so I do listen to secular music, because I, I grew up listening to hip-hop, and, and, and jazz, and classical, and rock, man, I'm all over the place with music, you know what I'm saying, but I don't listen to secular music when I'm riding with my babies, because I don't want that stuff flooding their minds, you know what I'm saying, so we was rocking out to some jazz, instrumental you know what i'm saying smooth jazz some brian culberson you know what i'm saying that's my guy you know paul hardcastle you know what i'm talking about some of you young bucks don't even know nothing about you know what i'm saying i'm a 70s baby man i, I know about this <laughs> you know what i'm saying some will downey Woo! talk to me ladies come on now yeah rocking out sounded so heavenly you know what i mean and so yeah the headphone audio effects that this phone provides is amazing. It is simply amazing. All right, now, on to the cameras. Boom. Now, let's look at some of the features. Now, this looks typical. A lot of phones have this same setup. Now, we have photo, video, short video, portrait mode, Night mode, square mode, panorama, and pro mode. Okay, and that's going to give you the ability to change all you know your white balance, uh, your shutter speed, your ISO. You know, change all that. All right. Looking forward to doing to shooting some footage and pictures with this phone because there hasn't been that one Xiaomi phone that I've had. Will there be the Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus, the Pocophone F1? Excellent cameras. And I know that this is no different. Okay, on the front here, we've got a 13 megapixel front facing camera. On the rear, we've got a 48 megapixel primary sensor and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Now, it's not a telephoto lens, so you do not have the ability to have two time optical zoom. Am I bothered by that? No, I'm not. I'm not bothered by that at all in the least bit because the performance of this camera is going to make up for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, when we up top, this is your flash. Keep that off. HDR mode. Okay. AI camera, which this is. You have the ability to toggle that on or off. And so what that means is this phone will and does have the capability of when you are in the viewfinder, it's going to be able to recognize where you are or the type of environment that you're in and it's going to customize on its own the colors based on the environment in which it knows you're in to help you get the best picture and video possible that's the power of an ai camera okay now we hit this little icon right there that brings up a bunch of little filters okay as you can see you got a few of them to choose from okay hit that to make them go away okay then when you hit the other settings, the, hit the menu option. This is going to bring you to your settings, your timer, tilt, shift, straighten, group selfie, beautify, Google Lens. Now, if we hit settings, we've got save location info, camera sounds, pocket mode, 
save previous mode, add timestamp on photo, dual camera watermark, show grid lines, which, yeah, let me turn that on because I like the grid lines. That helps me out. Focus and shoot. Tap to focus, then tap again to take a photo. Scan QR codes. Save original photo as well. Press and hold shutter button for either a burst shot or focus. We'll just keep it on burst shot by default. That's what it's on. Mirror front camera, camera frame, picture quality, and the camera frame, we've either got 4.3 or 16 by 9. Okay, picture quality, you got high, standard, or low. By default, it's on high. And then additional settings, fingerprint shutter, volume buttons function, shutter countdown, either shutter, zoom, or volume button, anti-banding, or auto exposure settings. And, oh, that's not it. Jeez, okay. So you can tweak the contrast, the saturation, the sharpness, privacy policy, restore defaults. And the sharpness in things, low, normal, or high, it's on normal contrast. You've got lowest, lower, low, normal, high, higher, highest. Or saturation, you've got same thing, lowest, lower, low, normal. It's on normal by default, high, higher, or highest. Damn, man, this, 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 yeah, this is a trip right here. Okay, now, some of the photos that I've taken, this was yesterday, while I was watching the game, just playing around during a commercial, very detailed, just clowning around with the camera, excellent detail, color reproduction, color accuracy, due to the lighting, it was kind of dim in the room, but the fact that it was able just to capture, you know, the shot, and it looks exactly the way that it looked, I don't seem to be overexposed or blown out at all, man, this was, picked the babies up from school, my baby girl, Sanaya. That's my three-year-old. This is London, my five-year-old. Man. Yeah. It's me again. And then that's the box that the phone came in. I mean, great, great detail. Color reproduction, color accuracy. Man, this camera, in my personal opinion, ladies and gentlemen, is completely loaded. 230 bucks, man. This is all you're getting. Pardon the long video, but again, like I said, my videos are more geared towards teaching experiences. It's not gonna be that quick five to seven minutes and then you're done, you know what I mean? If I'm trying to teach you guys about these phones and everything that they do to help you make an informed decision on whether or not this is an option for you, I need time to kind of go down, go down and break down everything. A lot of people talk trash about the fact that my videos are long, a lot of people appreciate it, you know what I mean? Hey, either way, I appreciate the love and, and the hate and the constructive criticism. You know what I mean? As I continue to grow with this thing, I'll try to find, you know, better ways to try to get all the information in in a, in a, in a timely fashion. But, man, this is just what it is, man. My content isn't for everyone. I wish that it was, but it's not. And I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? But as long as I know that I'm helping people with these devices and teaching as much as possible, you know what I mean? Then I'm happy with that. Because there's only so much that you can do with a phone when it's on demo on display what i'm doing is i'm getting my hands on these phones doing the unboxings showing you everything that i can possibly show camera video follow that with my full video with my full pristine review which is just my final overall thoughts and opinions on a phone after extensive use and real world testing you know what i mean so expect the same for the redmi note 7 here now i really think that this is given a g7 which is like the budgeted mid-range phone champion <laughs> a run for its money and it's cheaper. You know what I mean? I think the only thing that the, that the, that the, uh, that the uh, G7 may have over this is the fact that I believe the G7 has NFC. That's like the only thing that I can think about that the G7 may have over this. I'm not saying that the G7 is a bad device. I'm just saying that everybody's screaming, oh man, the G7 is the budget king, the budget king. Well, you know, uh, Redmi Note 7 got something to say about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Redmi Note 7 got something to say about that, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I'm saying. But uh, that's all I got for the unboxing and the first initial thoughts and impressions of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 7. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of more videos that I've done like this one. And again, share the video. If you guys know people or if you yourself are interested in this phone and you know somebody else that may be interested in this phone that wants a detailed breakdown, share the video, man. I'm just trying to educate and show everything that this phone does and what it's capable of and what it doesn't do, you know what I mean, to help you make an informed decision. That's what I do this for, all right? 
hit that notification bell so that every time my videos go live, you can get notified. Pristine tech, new video, check that out. And when you're done checking it out, get down in the comment section. Why? Because that's where I'm is. All right? That's where I'm at. In the comment section. Waiting for your questions, comments, feedback, constructive criticism, insults. If you're hating, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting. I'm chilling down in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a link to buy this phone from Amazon, which is where I bought it from, is also in the comment section. I mean, so you don't have to, bo you don't have to bother. Oh, come on, Bixby. Shut it on down, Bixby. I must have said something. Activated Bixby. All right. And Bixby trying to flex on me. All right. But yeah, no, if you want this phone, man, you ain't got to search. You know, you ain't got to go nowhere. Man, just click on the link in the description and it's going to pull it right on up. All right. So you guys already know, man, please stay safe. Get spiritually fit in 2019. Why? Because we're living in the last days, man. You know what I'm saying? You don't know about that? Are you, are you believers in Christ who read the Bible? If not all the Bible, know about the Bible, know about Revelations. Revelations being the last book in the Bible where it talks about the end times and a lot of the stuff that's going to be going on in the world before it all comes to an end, before Jesus comes back mm -hmm. to rapture up his people. You know what I mean? Well, a lot of the stuff that it talks about in Revelations are things that are going on in this world today. A lot of this corruption that's going on, it's in Revelations. Plagues, it's in Revelations. Violence, it's in Revelations. Racial injustice, murder, stealing, killing. It's all in Revelations, man. That's why I say get spiritually fit, man. Get close to Christ. Give your life over to Christ because tomorrow I never promise. Hell, the next 10 minutes after watching this video I ain't even promised. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, man, just submit your life to Christ, man. And no matter what you're going through and no matter what's going on around you, you're going to be all good. Because he, he protects and looks out for his people. You know what I'm saying? So get spiritually fit. Because, again, we are definitely living in the last days. And I'm going to catch y'all in the next video, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep it pristine. This is the Redmi Note 7. I'm your man, Pristine, the host, bringing the content. We out. Peace.